So this is the video for this Mr. Heckles handbag that I printed at 110%. Um, and I also show you in this video how to add a zipper divider. So we have in this one um, two slip or the regular slip pocket, which has four sections. We have the regular interior zipper pocket with the a zipper overlay, and then we have this zipper divider pocket. Um, so this one is going to be for my laptop bag. Um, and what else did I do? Oh, I changed the exterior so you don't have the handle connectors. I don't love the way that um, I closed up the pockets, the slip pockets. It's, I mean, it's okay and they're closed, but I like it better with the, the um, connectors. So this overlay that I used, I cut this out using my silhouette and I have an SVG file of it that I created. Um, so I might add that. SDG to my website. If anybody is interested, let me know. Um, also, the handles on this one, I cut 24 inches long. So I wanted it to be a shoulder bag, and it fits on my shoulder fine. Um, I think 26 to 28 inches might have been better, but I think this is pretty good for me. And let's measure the finish size, and then I'll show you comparable to the 85 and the 100%. So we've got three sizes, even though I didn't want to make a pattern that had multiple sizes this time. So we are coming in at just over 12 inches tall. Um, so it's about 12 and 1 8 inches tall. Width across the top is 17 inches. Across the bottom is about 15 inches. And then the depth at the bottom is 5 inches. Um, about. So, Mr. Heckles at 110%, and I do show you how to um, print larger in the next part of the video. Um, this is Mr. Heckles at 100% for comparison. You can see that it's a bit shorter. Here you can see the ends, bottom comparison. And I will also post pictures of these. And then Mr. Heckles at 85%. This one is currently full of all my stuff. Um, but it's a nice three sizes. So this 110% one is going to be for my laptop. Um, I think my laptop is 16 inches. I think I measured it the other day for somebody, which I think you measure it like diagonal. Um, I hope you enjoy watching me sew 110% Mr. Heckles. And then if you would like to, you can also watch me sew Mr. Heckles at regular 100% and Mr. Heckles at 85%. So thanks for watching. So we're going to make Mr. Heckles handbag at 110%. So it's just slightly bigger. It makes it about um, an inch taller and maybe an inch and a half wider, I think, um, roughly. So I kind of started cutting out some of the stuff. I printed the pieces. Um, let's go over that first. So when you print the pattern pieces, um, I printed them like one page at a time and I viewed how it looked on the screen before I actually like clicked print. Um, so I think it's pages 14 through 22 of the pattern that you want to print for um, pattern pieces only. And I'll pop up on the screen um, what the settings are for 110%. Um, so I think I printed 14, 15, 16, and 17 all regularly at 110%. It still fit on one page. Um, when I got to page 18 and page 19, I believe. Um, that it was going to cut it off. So like if you put the settings in and you put 110% and page 18 or whatever, um, it shows you like over on the side in the little dialog box um, where, where, the page, where the pieces fit on the page. Um, so wherever it shows like off on the side in the gray portion, that's not gonna fit on the page. So if you click on 
the poster um, option and then I set that to 100% or I'm sorry 110% and I put the overlap to half an inch just so that I had a little bit extra. So then it prints out one page, like this was one page and now it printed it on two. And it's kind of, you can see how part of the letter um, is there and then part of it's here. Even though you have the whole thing here, it's because of that overlap. So when you cut that out, I'm going to cut all the way around it and then we'll just overlap the pieces until they line up properly. And this is for the lining main, um, which we're going to do differently. And I think I'm not going to put a whole entire cutting video here, but I am going to cut out um, my lining pieces separately. So I'm just cutting the exterior first and then I'm going to do some of the sewing. And then I'm going to cut out the lining pieces because I want to put a divider pocket, uh, like a zip, zip top divider inside of the bag. Um, but in order to do that, we kind of need to change the way that it's constructed. So if you've made Mr. Heckles the way that it is right now, you sew like the um, sides to the bottom first, and then you kind of box the bottom along the front and back panels, which is a little bit different. Well, that would make it difficult to sew um, the center divider in. So we're going to change the lining so that it's constructed like the usual box bottom way. So um, right here on the side, oh, you know what? So I actually, there are like little lines that the printer put on the pages, um, which I think are like the overlap lines. So I should have paid attention to that. And I honestly, I knew that you could do the poster printing thing. I don't think I've ever done it. Just because if I want a, pa a pattern to be bigger, I usually just design a bigger size, like way bigger if you've seen my bags, but. Okay, so I cut right to the very edge of where the printing was. There's not a line there though. And here, honestly, I'm just going to overlap it. Well, you know what? I'm going to see what this line is. I think if I cut it straight. Yes. Okay. Let me get really close. Do you see these lines here at the top? If you, I don't know if you can. Okay. See these lines that it printed at the top and the bottom. The center line is where the pages meet up. So if you cut both directly along that center line. Um, I put like to have cut marks on or something, which will be in that screenshot. Um, so also you wanna probably take a screenshot of my printer settings so that you can do this. I'm going to cut right on that line. And then I think it should be perfect for these pieces to butt up to each other. Nope, that's wrong. It still overlaps. Okay, and it overlaps to where this the second line is. Sorry, we're kind of learning this together here. And it might be because of how I cut the first one out. So, considering the fact that my logo is right in the middle and the words are right in the middle of this, it's easy to see um, where it needs to be lined up. So I'm just going to overlap it until it looks right and then tape it together. Set this stuff on it so hopefully it doesn't move. Alright, and where are my scissors? So this little part on the bottom of the lining um, that sticks down that you normally would attach to the bottom panel. We're going to cut that off 
but I'm not going to do it yet until I figure out um, exactly how long I need to make my bottom panel. So hold off on that. Okay. So now we have what would normally print on one pad, one page, prints on two like that. I'm going to just toss another piece of tape on the back just to make it more sturdy. And then because that letter C is on the top, we're still going to be taping another piece to this. All right, so here are my other two pieces that printed poster style. So let me see how these little cut marks work. If I cut right on the two straight ones that were in the center. And I think this is, I don't know if this is Adobe print settings or through my computer that adds those little marks. I think it's Adobe. Okay, so that was on the center. I'll do the same on this one. And then you should be able to just butt those up and they line up and we'll know if it's wide enough because it should fit perfectly on the top of this all right which the bottom one's a little bit wider hmm. okay so I think it's better to overlap to line the pieces up because now I think I cut this a little bit too small I'm not sure really. So I'm just going to tape those together and then put tape on the back and do the same thing. And we're going to cut all that off anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, and then we're just going to cut these two pieces out. Um, so you can either do that with a ruler and rotary cutter or scissors. And I'm not going to um, film the entire process of me cutting the bag out, um, but I will film the entire assembly and then I will go over the changes that I make to cut the lining. So even though I'm going to cut the lining out later, I'll edit it. I'll edit everything together so that all the cutting is at the beginning of the video. Um, and I do want to go over one other thing, which is the applique pieces that I'm putting on my exterior, and also the quilting that I'm going to do on the exterior um, side panels. So I was thinking retro and I actually was going to use multiple colors but then once I got it cut out I really didn't like how it looked so um, I changed to like uh, purple this is clay vinyl I think shale clay shale might be the color shoot I will link it but it is um, vinyl from Mormino and it's like super squishy feels like leather almost um, and I'm going to do an applique. Do you see how that looks? Kind of a, a retro thing is what I was thinking. Um, so I'm going to put that on the front and back panel. And then I have a piece of cardstock that I cut out also. So I can use this as a template. One, for laying my pieces out. And two, to add quilting to the side panels. I can just trace this. Um, I cut it out on my Silhouette machine, so I cut this one out of cardstock, I cut the other out of the Mormino vinyl. Alright, so let's go over the changes that we need to make for the lining. Um, so, first thing, we're not going to attach the bottom panel in the same way as the exterior. So, this piece, um, we can cut off of the pattern piece. And 
and it is three quarters of an inch um, long. Sorry. So what we're going to do then is the bottom panel, um, we will need to make the half three quarters of an inch longer so that overall it's an inch and a half longer. Um, so we're going to cut out our bottom panel. So what we want to do, we need to now add three quarters of an inch to the half length of this. Um, and also because we're putting a divider pocket, we need to fold the bottom panel in half because we're going to cut it in two separate halves to sew the divider in there. So we have, uh, I have some black waterproof canvas. This is just from Walmart, um, so not anything special. So I'm going to fold that in half because you want to cut this on the fold still. And I need to make sure that I have at least three quarters of an inch um, extra length. So I want to make sure I have three quarters of an inch extra here to cut. I am going to take my ruler. I want to add one half inch where I folded it in half for a seam allowance and then add um, three quarters of an inch at the end. So the way I'm going to do this, if I can do it without it moving, is to place the ruler um, with half inch overhang on the right side and three quarters of an inch at the end. All right, so I'm just going to cut the half inch and then the three quarters of an inch. And I'm actually going to cut that over further because then I can use it to cut my other half. And then without allowing that pattern piece to move, I'm going to cut directly along the back side. Um, no extra added here. So once that's cut out, this will now be half of our bottom panel and let's see what it measures. Three and a half inches by 16 inches. All right, so now that I have the measurement, um, this next one I'll just cut three and a half by 16. Okay, so what other things do we need to change? We will need to cut out, um, let's cut our lining panels and then we'll figure out the size to cut the divider pockets. We'll need four panels for that. Um, we're still going to add the slip pocket and the interior zipper pocket. So there's gonna be a lot of pockets in this bag, um, which is probably good for like a work bag or like my, I'm gonna use it for a laptop bag, so. I think that you'd want a lot of pockets in that. But then I think I need to make an actual laptop laptop bag pattern because I don't have one. Okay, so. We wanna make sure that our interior divider pocket is shorter than the lining main. So 
This is just over 11 and a half inches tall. So I think we'll cut our divider pocket about 10 and a half inches tall. And then once we sew it to the zipper and everything, it will be a little bit shorter. Um, so let's go ahead and cut two of these linings now. So. So we want the divider pocket to be the same length, yes, we want it to be the same length as the bottom panel um, and then the corner of it will end up being in our um, box corner. So that was 16 inches long and we want it 10 and a half inches tall. So 16 by 10 and a half. All right, and this ruler is eight inches wide. And I'm thinking of this backwards, okay. Okay, do it this way. So 10 and a half inches tall by eight and a half, or by eight inches. We'll make it 16 inches because, yes, okay. This ruler is 10 inches wide. All right, we're gonna have to trim the bottom of that off because it's not quite straight. And we will need four of these. I have this folded I might cut out this is how I cut kind of sporadic I don't think there's any other pieces that we're going to change so we're going to cut two bottom panels three and a half by 16 four divider pocket um, panels that are 16 wide by 10 and a half tall everything else will be cut the way that it printed um, Yes, anything that is cut to measure, oh, I threw that part away. So yeah, I think everything else can just be cut um, based on the pattern pieces. And I'm going to cut as much as I can out of this waterproof canvas. And if I run out, then I'll cut the rest out of the water resistant canvas that I use for my exterior slip pocket. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today, um, we're going to finish this tote that I started last weekend. I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, so I did one side already. We're going to put the applique on. Um, this is, I cut this using my silhouette, silhouette machine. Um, so I have an SVG of this design. If anybody's interested in the SVG of this design, I could throw it on my website. I cut this using my silhouette um, and then I also cut a template out of cardstock and I used it to trace onto this side panel to quilt. 
So I have foam on my side panel um, so that it would be quilty. And then I have Decoville light on my main panel, um, bottom and top. And I'm doing the same exact thing on the front and the back. So um, the back will also have the slip pocket. So both sides. Um, so we're kind of closing it up a little bit differently. And I mean, the pocket is completely closed, so it's fine. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first thing I do, I'm taking my um, main bottom panel exterior and you wanna make sure that it is the wider end at the top. So that panel I actually made twice because the first time I stuck everything on the wrong direction. I'm using um, a ruler and this cardstock template um, as a guide to help me lay the pieces out correctly. So I want the final pieces to be three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. So I'm going to put my ruler about five eighths of an inch actually from the bottom and then put my template on and make sure that it's centered from left to right. And I'm going to, I have um, masking tape here. So I'm just going to put a couple pieces on the top just to kind of help hold this in place. And I had it folded up for the last week. It kind of, I didn't lay it out flat, so it's looking a little funky, but it'll be okay. So I've got all of my little pieces here. Um, and what I did was heat seal these. I cut them out on the silhouette. And then since this vinyl, which is the clay vinyl from Mormino, it has a bit of a fuzzy backing. Um, so I just heat sealed the edges with a lighter. So I'm going to start with the middle piece and I have half inch um, double-sided tape. And then I also have quarter inch and eighth inch. So depending on which part, I'll use different sizes. Um, the half inch is like my go-to. So I'm just going to honestly use a lot of tape. And part of this, I will be cutting, but I don't want to stick it down all the way. So in just a second, and like, there's probably an easier way to do this um, than what I'm doing. I don't know, but this is what I did. It worked out okay. You see my temporary curtain up there. It uh, snowed yesterday and then it's sunny out right now. So it's like super, super bright outside. Um, and I don't have any curtains up still because my windows still aren't finished. So we did go buy what we need to do to finish the windows. And I think we're just gonna finish it ourselves since that contractor never called back. So. All right. Okay, so this part here, I'm not going to peel the paper off of that. Um, because we're going to cut the top of this off. So I just kind of stick them all down like that. Okay, so that's all stuff down. I'm going to remove my little template carefully because some of the tape is stuck to it. Okay, I swear I didn't have that issue on the first one. Okay, 
I peeled the whole tape off or the paper off of that one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use this ruler. Um, this is a half inch seam allowance. So see where the half inch falls? Just this little bit ends up um, kind of poking out. I want it to look purposeful. So I'm actually going to measure in three quarters of, a, of an inch so that it matches um, the way the bottom is. I'm going to take a piece of masking tape so that I'm not writing on this. And I'm going to just line that up. And there's where I want to cut off. I ordered myself some new Kai scissors, finally, and those came this week. And I hope I didn't stick this down too well, because I don't want this tape to be exposed. Hang on, before I commit to cutting this off, let me make sure the tape is going to peel. Okay, it will. So don't put your tape all the way up against this edge if you're using this design and making this at 110%. If you're making it at 100%, um, I don't think that this is a concern. All right, so I just moved the tape out of the way and then I'm just going to cut this um, overlay part only, or the applique part, even with my masking tape. I'm sorry, you can't really probably see what I'm doing here, but... a little bit more so I don't want any of it to be exposed okay so now it won't be part way sewn into that seam I'll repeat that on this side This side didn't get stuck down as well, so it's easier if you peel it up before you try to cut it. All right, I'll stick that back down. And then the top here, we're going to cut this section off um, because I want it to line up with, I'll, I'll put these on the top part um, and they'll align. So I'm just going to measure again, I think three quarters of an inch down. I think before I did five eighths, but I would have liked it to be just a little bit more wiggle room. So I'm going to reuse the same piece of masking tape. Just stick that there, and then I'm also going to stick a piece of masking tape on the top of these. Um, more than one piece because I cut it so short so that they stay lined up. Alright, and then I'm just going to cut each one of these right above this tape. Don't be like me and peel all of the paper off. Oh, 
Okay. So now I just need to peel the paper off the back of the ones that I didn't do completely and stick the top of these down. Okay, and then we'll line this top panel up with this. And I want to measure um, three quarters of an inch up. I'm so sorry that you can probably see my head here. All right, and with the tape still on them, I'm going to remove the paper backing, maybe one at a time. And I'm just kind of lining these up with the ones below as best I can. Oh, it's hard to see. All right, and I want to make sure that I don't stick the top part of it down completely because I'm going to have to trim that. You know, I should have used my masking tape. I should have used masking tape. Um, more masking tape, that's all. Just more. because I'm just eyeballing it at this point. See, don't believe that I'm somebody who knows what I'm doing. I don't. Let me see how that lines up. Looks pretty good to me. Make sure these are even, they're not bad, so. All right, last thing I wanna do now is trim this from the top. Um, Okay, and the other ones, I trimmed it one inch down from the top. So I'm going to remove this tape. Measure one inch down. Use another piece of masking tape. Masking tape is my friend when I'm sewing. I use it for embroidery, and I've been using it for sewing a lot lately. And I like it better than like using erasable marking tools or... Alright, so now I'm just going to trim all of these right at the top of that masking tape. And the reason why I'm trimming it out of the seams is just so that I don't have that additional bulk of another layer of vinyl going through the seams. This might be easier to cut from this side. Okay, now I'll make sure these are completely stuck down and remove the rest of my paper. All right, so it's not so bad. 
and now we're just going to top stitch all of these on. I'm not back stitching anything because we're gonna leave long tails and tie it, tie it all off in the back. So. I'm just going to use a lighter to singe the thread um, and kind of melt that knot together so that this doesn't come untied. Be careful doing this. Um, I'm not liable for you burning yourself or anything else. All right, so we have the top panel done. Now we're going to do the main panel. Um, same process, I just start sewing at the top and then use an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And take my time. All right, so our panels are done now. Let's see, we need to add the connectors. All right, so I'm using seat belt webbing for my connectors. Um, so I'm just going to fold it over and baste in place. That was a pretty serious basting. And I feel like using seat belt webbing um, is just a little bit thinner than using the vinyl for all of the parts because I just I just don't want that to get super thick. Um, and I like the nice simple look of the seat belt webbing. I'm putting these connectors five and a half inches apart. So I'm going to kind of find the center, which is probably easier. Well, I already have it marked there, so I'm just going to put a little snip at the center. Okay, so there's five and a half inches between um, the two connectors. So I want to place this two and three quarters of an inch from the center. One, two, and three quarters. This would work better if I have it marked because I'm not going to like hold a ruler on it the whole time. Okay. So two and three quarters from the center. I want to, um, 
I cut my webbing three inches tall and I want to place the webbing to the outside of my marks and baste it in place. Um, and I actually want to extend it. Let's see, I'm going to baste it in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I want to extend the webbing half inch past that. So I just line the end of the webbing up with the three quarter inch mark on my seam guide. that with the other end and you can always mark um, on your webbing where you want to sew or you don't have to do it like this but all right so one quarter inch seam allowance and the end of my webbing is at the three quarter inch mark to yes, place these right sides together. First I'm matching up the center and then the rest of the way. And I think on the other side I sewed right to the edge of the connector, but I don't really like it like that. Um, I feel like it pulls a little too much. So I want to sew like a quarter inch past the edge of the connector. So let me actually take, so if you are following along with the main pattern, we leave a gap here. We sew three inches in from each end is what we do on that pattern. Um, here I'm going to leave a five inch gap in the center. Okay. All right, and I sew this with a one half inch seam allowance. I'm using one half inch seam allowance for this whole bag. Even though it's enlarged, it's not, it's only enlarged 10%. So I think half inch seam allowance is still sufficient. You may want to shorten your stitch length for, for the assembly portion. Um, I usually like to use like a four for assembly and a five or four and a half for top stitching, depending. I got a hump jumper. So let's see how it works. Oh, I think that I, no, oh, that's fine. It's fine. stitching there so it doesn't pull at the top of that pocket. On the original pattern, the way it's assembled, um, the straps are sewn on the outside and when you do that you close up the sides of the pocket. Well on this one with the connectors this way, we're going to have to sew the sides of the pocket closed so you kind of just have to uh, use a little bit of a different technique for assembly. And I find it better to really backstitch well at the edge of that pocket opening. And 
let's see how this works coming off of okay. pretty good Let's see how that looks. All right, that looks good. All right, we're going to use the same method to attach the pockets that we did before. It's a little bit more difficult with these connectors in here. Um, so, placing this is water resistant canvas from Mormino. I'm placing this right side down and matching it up to the seam allowance portion only of the bottom panel, matching the center. And then kind of just across here. We're going to sew this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I'm sewing over my strap, ends of my strap connector, and that's okay. Or less if it's easier. Doesn't matter. So you, want that. you want to make sure you're not sewing um, the other portion of the smallest for the top. You know, so make sure that stays folded back the whole time. And then we're going to repeat this by flipping over to this side. You can kind of use the pocket that's attached to pull that out of the way. And we want to put this right side down and centered, which I don't think that's actually the center. So I'm matching the center up first. And then we're just going to also sew this using a quarter inch seam allowance. This side is a little bit trickier because of the connector over there trying to get in the way. So just take your time and do your best. You can swear a little bit, it might help. So, I'm going to put my zipper foot because I think that's going to be easier. I'm just going to sew this in place also using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to sew first the center portion of it because where those connectors are is really hard to sew by. The original pattern is not like this. If you don't have these different connectors, it's so much easier to sew together. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is because I changed the way the connectors attach to the bag, which just makes it a little more difficult. A lot more difficult, actually.
So I would recommend still using the regular connectors, I think. I didn't want to sew them over the design. Maybe it wouldn't look so bad. I don't know. This is an option. It's just not the easiest. So. Go back to the start of this and see what I can do. It's flying, right? Okay, that's cool. Nobody's going to see what that looks like underneath there, and it's all attached. That's what's important, um, and I stuck to kind of a quarter inch seam allowance, but no bigger. So, okay, now we want to flip the seam allowance open. And this part's a little bit tricky too because of the connectors again, but we're going to, with the seam allowance open, we're going to top stitch this. So. The way the pocket is sewn, it doesn't actually get top stitched right here. It's sewn out of that seam allowance. Or, well, since we used a quarter inch seam allowance to attach it, yeah. Okay, so we're going to top stitch the top portion of this first. And I'm going to keep my zipper foot on for right now. Because that's going to be easier for me to sew behind these connectors. I want to switch back to a stitch length of five. And I'm going to do my best to keep um, an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It's a little bit harder because I have this zipper foot on, so I don't have like a guide. But I'm just going to do my best. And that is going to be good enough. I guess really the guide could have been the edge of the center foot. to now switch back to my other foot. So normally I use this narrow presser foot that I get from Warmino. I don't get it there. I got it there. I only need one. And I attach it with this screwdriver. I attach it with this screwdriver that I also got from Warmino. And it's rainbow and it has glitter. I like it. Okay. So now, seam allowance is still open. I'm going to kind of pull that bottom pocket panel down, mm -hmm. and I'm going to sew this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance beneath the seam. close up the pocket so this is also different than it is in the original because oh look I top stitched through that anyway oh well all right so on the on the um, regular pattern you sew the bottom closed only and then when you sew the handles on it top stitches um, or when you top stitch the handles on it sews through the sides of the bag well with the different handle connectors that we're using that is not the way that this works so, hang on, let me do this the right way. I'm going to put some clips on here. And first, we're just going to sew the bottom together. You can trim it first if you want. Um, not necessary, but one panel does end up being a little bit shorter than the other. 
especially if you top stitch through it, even though I shouldn't have. But that doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm just going to sew this close. I'm just going to use like 7 8 inch seam allowance so I know that I'm catching the other side without trimming that. these pockets up on the sides I'm just going to use a yeah I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch mods. oh I should back stitch that and I'm sewing all the way up as high as I can onto the seam allowance so technically there will be like a little tiny gap um, of an opening all the way, but don't sew past the seam. Which actually my hardware will not allow me to, so no worries with that. Alright, so the way this is, technically there's a tiny gap in the top of the pocket there, but it doesn't matter. Um, no, you're not gonna know it's there. Nothing. I don't know what you'd have in that pocket that is gonna slide all the way up here and come out the side. So, all right, I'm gonna repeat that to close the other side of the pocket, and then. Do the quilting on the other side panel. Okay, so to do the side panel, um, first we're going to cut a piece that is bigger than the side panel. So this is longer and wider, um, and I'm putting foam behind it. And the reason why I'm basting the foam on now and then I'm going to quilt it and then cut it out is because um, when you're quilting on the foam, you'll have some shrinkage. Um, so if you cut out your panel completely and then quilt it, it's going to end up a little bit too small. So you want to do the quilting first, and that goes for any quilting on a bag. Um, you'll do the quilting and then cut it out. Alright, so I'm just going to base this in place using a long stitch length. Um, this all gets cut off. It's just to hold the foam on. Uh, I actually like to base it from the foam side. So that is basin in place, and now we are going to use this template, which is all wrinkly now, and I'm just kind of centering it. Um, I want to make sure that I'll be able to 
put my pattern piece onto this. I'm going to kind of look at the one I already did. Okay. So I think I am going to use a little bit more tape this time. I don't know if this would be better if it was cut out of like um, some plastic type substance. I don't know. It's a little bit. It probably would have been better if I just laid it flat somewhere instead of just tossing it aside and letting it sit for a week. All right, and I don't know. All right, I don't know the best thing to use to mark it, but what I used to mark the other side was one of these um, leather marking pens from Warmino, and it does wash off. Um, I don't know the best way to wash it off, but I used like a wet paper towel and honestly, um, a Clorox wipe. Or Lysol wipe. But I'm not that worried about the smearing because it washes off. I thought about using chalk, but this pen kind of glides on a little easier um, than what I think chalk would. So now I'm going to remove this template and I'll probably throw it away. And I'm just going to kind of quilt all these lines. Again, I'm not going to back stitch anything. Um, this is where I started in the middle. I started on the center one because I didn't want it to start pulling like one direction or the other. So like I worked out from the center. So I'm just going to start at the very top corner of like the center portion of the design. Um, I like to use a stitch length of five for this. Oh, and actually, this top part, it doesn't matter if you backstitch, this top part I will be covering up with um, my side connector. So. I'm just stitching directly along the lines that I marked. piece to mark out what I'm cutting. Um, so I want to make sure that it's directly down the center um, and then I line up the bottom of the stitching with like the interfacing line I guess on the pattern piece. So first I'm just going to Kind of mark out my centers and then I'm just going to trace this right onto the right side of the vinyl so that I can see it um, so that I can see my design
Okay. Whew. So I'm placing um, the side connector a little bit differently than I do on the original pattern, just so it covers the top of this. Um, and I'm only doing this side that way because I already did the other side that way. So right now I'm just cutting out where I marked. So, um, the last thing I'm going to do here is trim the foam away from this bottom part. Why I did that, I don't really know, but I already did it on the other side, so I want to keep that the same. And then I, I definitely do know why I did this. I trimmed it back out of the top seam, um, just because it's going to be easier to top stitch around the finished bag without foam folded down inside of the seam. Now last week when I was sewing, I really should have marked down some of the measurements that I'm using, or that I used, because I honestly don't remember. Um, why I thought I would is beyond me, but I do not. So, let's see, I do know that I want to fold the connector, the side connector over the D-ring um, so that it's a half inch up from the bottom. to paste that together. All right, this side panel piece, um, I cut this nine inches long. It's still three inches wide, so that's the same as the pattern. Nine inches long, um, I don't think it needs to be that long, but just to be safe. So then one and a half inches in to mark the center. going to use double-sided tape right down the center which this is a little bit overkill I don't think it needs to be half inch wide or whatever however wide this is three quarters of an inch five eighths wide all right so I'm just going to fold the long edges into that center line and press it down into the tape And then take some measurements here. So the top of this ends up being one and a quarter inches down. So the bottom of the D ring 
It's almost. the same all right so for me the bottom of my d-ring or the bottom of my connector is one and a half no two and a half inches down from the top um you wouldn't have to do this if you didn't have funky quilting that ended weird at the top of your side panel so um i would normally i think use the same measurements that are in the pattern for this part, I wouldn't do anything different with what I'm doing right now. to remember to install rivets before um, I attach the, this side panel and the front panel to the back panel and the other side panel um, while everything is still flat. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put another piece of tape down the back center of the side panel accent piece, I think I call it. I don't remember. All right, and I'm going to place this so it's covering the top of my quilting lines as best as I can. And then I just want to make sure that it's straight. And hopefully it's like somewhat even with the other side. So, yep, looks good. All right, so I'm going to cut this extra off right now so it doesn't stick to my sewing machine. And now on this one, I used one eighth of an inch to go all the way around and then I went inside of it a little bit. Um, so we'll do that again. I'll start at the top using an eighth inch seam allowance and um, stitch length of five. So that's about a half inch. How did I do that? I don't even remember. I'm honestly just kind of eyeball it, so yeah, that's fine. I don't remember if I like used a ruler. I think I did. I feel like too tired to function right now, and I don't know why I'm this tired. I'm blaming it on winter.
All right, so we have our two side panels finished. I'm going to sew this onto the back panel, front panel. I think this one's going to be the front. Oh, I probably would like want to use one of my heart wooden hide tags on this bag also. Um, I do want to make sure I sew this side panel to the same side as that side panel, so that way when I put them right sides together, um, the side panels will be on opposite sides. That seemed confusing, so hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. Stitch length of four. All right, we're going to top stitch now through the front panel. So fold the seam allowance behind the front panel and top stitch, oops, I want to do it this way, using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Back to a stitch length of five. All right, and I do like how this applique piece looks a lot better um, ending there instead of going into the seam a little bit. Okay, so now let's install rivets. So I need a pen, preferably one that works. I'm going to measure I don't know, I'm just gonna put dots wherever. Do I wanna measure it? I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I wanna put right in the center of this. I will measure these ones. About half inch down. And centered half inch down from the seam that is oh, this one kind of eyeball that again I just want that to be in the middle. So you know, like I did not cut my lining out yet. Not looking forward to that. Okay. Make sure those all look even. I think they do. Let's just go for it. And I was going to 
if you watched my, I think it was the leather um, Mr. Heckles video, 85%. And I was talking about how I was going to order um, a cam snap press to be able to use to um, as a hole punch. And I didn't do it yet because I don't know why. So here I am going to struggle through punching holes through the seatbelt webbing. I think it's the seatbelt webbing that really like makes this so difficult. And my husband's not here to help me today. All right, so I don't think I'm going to record my entire hole punching process because it's gonna be a while, so. I'm back, I got all of my rivets installed. Um, not, not the easiest process getting the holes punched. Um, I think it's going through the webbing that's so difficult for me, but I have kind of carpal tunnel in my um, right wrist specifically, so that makes it extra hard to punch the holes. I really swear I'm gonna order um, a new press, or a, yeah, like a rivet press to punch holes though. A cam snap press specifically. Okay, so I placed these right side together just so I can sew it into the full loop. Um, half inch seam allowance, stitch length of four. figure out what I'm going to do for dinner. Top stitch through the back panel. Nope, I won't. Wait, which way do I want it to be? I want it to be this way. It gets a little, a little bit trickier when it's this big to maneuver. So I'm pressing the seam allowance toward the main panel. Um, and this one, I have my little decorative. Um, applique thing kind of in the seam here since this was the first one I did and I didn't realize that I wanted to like cut it out of the seam one and then this will be the most dif difficult one seam to top stitch because it's inside of a whole like loop <laughs> at that point a bag tube um, this one's a little bit more difficult even because it's uh, enlarged so to start working on my next pattern this week. Um, if you've been around for a little while, you know that every year I have a birthday sale. Um, 
So my birthday is coming up and I really wanted to have at least one more pattern out before then. That was like my goal. So I have something in mind that I think I'm going to try. I, I have a pattern that I started before I moved, um, but I don't know, I'm just not really feeling it. All right, so half inch seam allowance here. And I honestly, just as I finished sewing that line, thought of something. Um, I am going to do a drop-in lining on this one because of the fact that I'm going to put a divider pocket inside of it. Um, and because of that, I was going to make a mark all the way around the top edge before sewing it together um, of where my one half inch... Well, I guess I was going to make a mark one inch down so I can fold the top edge down an inch. Whatever, though. I didn't do it. All right, so now we're going to top stitch inside of this. Um, and I think for, like, full bag making instructions, I would definitely watch, like, the regular video for the regular size, not this enlarged one. Um, since I've changed so many things, this one's not exactly, like, how the patterns are in. snip the threads real quick so I don't pull out a big long piece of thread. All right. I definitely love the way that looks. If you use my overlay um, or applique, whatever you want to call it, and place it on the 110%, I would definitely cut the sides of the applique back so it's out of those side seams. It just looks so much nicer. All right, so now to attach the bottom panel. All right, so here's my bottom panel. It has Decoville Heavy attached. Um, this is not in the pattern. Just something I'm going to do is sew at three quarters of an inch um, all the way around the base, just for a little bit of extra detail. Actually, no, I'm gonna go with seven eighths because I have that line here and I think that would be um, far enough in from the seam allowance that if, I'm, like if my stitches are a little bit crooked or something, that it's not going to be noticeable. Do 
little more like short stitch. Okay, perfect. I forgot that I was going to sew like one of my straps off camera, one on camera, um, and then I didn't. So I'm just gonna just erase that. stitch here. All right, and my stitches line up, and I'm just going to pull this to the back like I did with um, the applique, and then I'll tie it off. And this serves two purposes. Um, so it's decorative, that's what I like about it, but then also sometimes when you're like manipulating your bag, the Decoville um, can like kind of separate even though it's fused on. So if it's also sewn in place, then you don't have to worry about that. And I feel like it gives a nice finished look to the bottom of the bag. All right. This, um, Clay vinyl has a very leather-like look. I think I think I might make like a, um, an ugly naked guy hobo bag out of this because I think it would have like just the perfect amount of slouch. All right, so now I'm just sliding the bottom panel inside and matching the bottom of the side panel up with the short end on the bottom panel. Right, I'm gonna sew that together using a one half inch seam allowance. Seam allowance got off a little bit because the foot went next to the deco bow. So I'm going to go back in and kind of sew back across this part way. Lots of threads now. All right, when I top stitch this, I'm just going to top stitch through the bottom of the side panel using a 1/8 inch seam allowance. Over. 
And we're going to repeat that on the other side. So I'm just kind of bending the bottom panel in half a little bit. Not like creasing it, but it's, it's folded in here. So that I can um, match up the other end with the other side panel. And I'm also going to sew that together using a quarter or a one half inch seam allowance. So we're going to fold that seam allowance up toward the side panel and we're going to top stitch here through the bottom of the side panel. Another little tube kind of situation, um, but we're also going to use a 1 8 inch seam allowance here. Now this, I think, is my favorite part of the bag. Like so many people were super excited about the exterior pocket, um, which I didn't really think much about. It was difficult for me to figure out. Um, like I, I literally had like sleepless nights while I tried to figure it out. But this, um, the way to sew the bottom panel in is like a boxed bottom, only you're boxing it along the front and back instead of the sides. So it's kind of like a reverse, I don't know. I don't know, it's still a box bottom I guess, but it's different. Um, so first I'm matching up the bottom center, or the center along the long sides, and then just all the way out to the corners. And I'm just matching the long edge of the bottom panel up to the bottom edge of the front or back panel, it doesn't matter which one. And all the way down to the corners. to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. The side seams are kind of pointing out. Which as long as you top stitch um, this end of your bottom panel, that's which way they should go naturally. I never remember to reduce my stitch length. Out what is squeaking on this? What the heck? Like, I literally oiled every part of the sewing machine before I started this. Okay, part of it I think is the stuff rubbing on the table, but that isn't.
right. And now we'll repeat that same process with the other side. So first I'm matching up the bottom center. with one half inch seam allowance on this end, or this side, I guess. We're going to start sewing the lining. Um, so I have here the pieces that I cut for my interior zipper pocket. Um, I'm sorry, the divider pocket. And the first thing I'm going to do is put those together. Um, I have the zipper tape I'm using is from Weft and Warp Co. It's um, like a black leopard or cheetah. I have two zipper folds that I'm going to put on this and then one for the top of the bag and one for my interior zipper pocket. Um, I didn't have, normally I guess for something like this I would use um, zipper with the same colored teeth as my zipper fold. I didn't have any um, antique brass zipper tape that was a color that matched this bag. So I decided to go with this. Um, it's a very subtle leopard and then it has black teeth. So always when I cut my zipper tape, I use a lighter to singe the ends so that it doesn't fray. And then I'm just going to put the two poles on. So to put two poles on, you want to put one on one end and one on the other end. It's just more important that you make it line up right so that you don't have um, weird bubbling. These zipper poles are from Warmino. Now. They are her pop tab zipper poles. All right, and then you just pull them to meet in the middle. All right, so I'm going to take one of my interior zipper panels, the, what are we gonna call it? Zipper divider pocket panels? I don't, I don't know. All right, we're gonna put the zipper right side down on the right side of one of these. And I'm just going to clip it in place. And then I think I'm actually gonna do this all in one step. So normally 
I would like baste this to one of the panels and then put the other panel on top right side down so the right sides together and I'm just going to put it all together right now and then sew them together we'll see if I finish this I really want to finish this bag tonight so that way I have tomorrow to edit and upload, which takes forever. Um, so that's my goal. All right, I wanna sew this together using as close as I can get to a three eighths inch seam allowance. We fold both of these panels wrong sides together and away from the zipper. So I'm just going to match these up and kind of stick a couple of clips on here. Just hold those together. And then I'm just going to like pull the zipper away from the fabric. All right, and we're just going to top stitch this using an eighth inch seam allowance. I'm going to use a stitch length of four and a half to top stitch on the waterproof canvas. Um, I just find that that looks better than a stitch length of five. And I don't really know why. It, it has something to do with like the green or the texture of the waterproof canvas. Um, it kind of directs, I guess, the number five stitches into the pattern, or I don't freaking know. Either way, I think four and a half looks better on a waterproof canvas. You also could iron that if you so desire. All right, now we're going to repeat that with the other two panels on the other side of the zipper. So I'm making sure that the sides of my um, divider pocket panels are like lined up with the sides of the ones that are already attached to the zipper. So that together, also using a 3 8 inch seam allowance or as close as I can get to that. And then I think I might check, well, this isn't a bad spot to run out of bobbin thread, so I'm not going to check it 
I'll check it before I top stitch though, I think. Not top stitch this without checking the bottom. I do dare. nice oh I forgot to put a I forgot to put one of my tags on the outside of the bag oh wow all right and then I'm just going to fold this in half with the zipper right along the top match the sides all up and then I'm going to baste the sides and the bottom um, I'll use a quarter inch seam allowance for that and then they will be sewn into the seam allowance on the lining panels. I'm sorry. It's hard to talk and think at the same time, I guess. Flipping and talking. on the end of this. Too late now. Alright, so I'm just basting this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. for it to happen. Hard in my head. Thank you. 
um, spray thread that I'm using. I didn't mention it is from Sia Swag. So that is our divider pocket. Now we'll make the slip pocket. Um, if you wanted to, since we're making this bigger, like a laptop bag, I'm going to make the slip pocket the same pretty much as it is in the regular pattern. Um, it's so going to be divided just the same. If if you wanted to put like a padded laptop um, pocket in, then, oh, you know what? Okay, let me think this through. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to assemble this a little bit differently. So I did not have enough of the waterproof canvas um, for the whole lining so some of it is purple water resistant canvas from more me now that doesn't really match the clay vinyl but it won't be like up against it anywhere so it doesn't matter okay so right now i'm just sewing um wrong sides together no right sides together along the bottom of the slip pocket pieces using a quarter inch seam allowance Now I'm going to fold these wrong sides together. I'm going to make, <laughs> I, that's funny. I just said that the vinyl won't be up against the purple water resistant canvas at all and I'm going to put it right next to that, but whatever. This is going to be inside of the pocket. You won't really see it. Okay, so folding these wrong sides together along this edge that I just sewed. If this is somewhere that uh, ironing wouldn't be a horrible idea, but I'm not going to do that. top part of this, I have the raw edges together and I'm going to clip them together all the way down and then I'm going to baste this side using a quarter inch seam allowance. This is what I'm, this is different than the pattern so keep that in mind. That's just like the beauty of sewing that you can make things your own. You don't have to follow the pattern exactly. All right, so now I have this one inch wide strip. Um, I'm going to mark the center.
double-sided tape. I'll use the wide one for this. This is almost an inch wide. Um, this water or this double-sided tape is also from Weft and Warp, but I bought it from Mormino. Um, so Mormino carries some of the Weft and Warp double-sided tape. So I'm going to lay the top of this just beneath that center line that I marked. See how much of this I can get stuck to the fabric versus what's stuck to my fingers. All right, and then I'm going to fold that over the top. Hopefully that's pretty even. And now I'm just going to top stitch it on using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Oh, go this way. So that just gives it a little something extra. This, this seam seems to be staying folded now. Um, so I'm going to take my lining main and find the bottom, which is the wider edge. And I'm going to place the pocket. Um, most importantly, you want to place it straight. You want it to be at least a half inch up from the bottom so it doesn't get caught in the seam. And then I'm going to get some of these clips. up from the bottom. I don't honestly know what the pattern says because I'm not looking at it right now. Um, but the most important thing is just that it's not in that seam in the bottom. So one inch will suffice. It's good that I just moved it everywhere. Alright, let's check that again. Um, and you could use double-sided tape on this. I would use something thin so that it's not sticky on the inside of your pocket. And then I'm just going to top stitch this using an eighth inch seam allowance. I still have my stitch length on 4.5.
now I'm going to base the sides of this and I'm going to do it from the back um, just because the sides of the main panel are curved and the sides of the pocket are not. And it's easier. It's easier to see where I'm sewing from the back. I'm afraid even if I did have a microphone on, my sewing machine would drown me out. It's loud. I'm going to trim off the excess. All right, and I'm going to use my trusty masking tape again. So first I'm going to find the center. I'm just going to put a little clip in the very bottom. Okay. So the center is right there. I'm going to put my ruler on so that it's straight. And I'm going to use my tape. To mark the center line. Just going to top stitch right next to that using the four and a half stitch length. So you could leave it just like that. Um, I'm still going to sew two more lines. So I think I'm going to measure over five inches. Or do I wanna go, I'm gonna go six from the center line. And I'm just reusing the same piece of tape. tape still seems pretty sticky so I'll probably use it again. Six inches over. This is nice because this ruler is six inches wide. I'm 
And I honestly love so far like everything about this bag. I hope that my um, divider pocket comes out okay. Taylor tote. All right. Let's look at that. I really like the gray stitching on the black, and I like the gray. It just looks good on everything. Um, let's pick out a label for this. So I have cork and leather. Um, sincerely, Jen labels from Heartwood and Hyde. So I don't know if I want, I don't know what I want to use. I might use a, just a black one. Let's see. I have a lot of leather, silver leather. I really like this leather one, but I don't know if it's like clashing. Oh, there's so many. I can't believe I just dumped them all out. I don't know if I have like a plummy purple kind of. Or maybe I'll use that just because it's completely different. I literally just have like such a huge variety. All right, so I think at this point I'm between these three. really like this. I think that this looks good on the black. I'm just going to go with it. All right, so I'm going to use a little piece of um, tape on the back. And then, obviously the center is right there. Do I dare eyeball it? I think so. If I can get the paper off. Okay. I'll put it like right here. All right, I think that looks good. And I'm not going to backstitch because we'll tie this off in the back. I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I do backstitch. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. All right, and I'm just using an eighth inch seam allowance. And my stitch length is still on 4.5. I've yet to find the perfect stitch length to not have to manually adjust where my last stitch is going on each line on these tags.
my tails long so that I can tie it off. So that side's done. Our zipper divider packet's done. Let's do the other side. All right, we've got the zipper overlay to interiors of her pocket panels. Um, so I want to find the top of my interior interior main lining main lining main. Okay, I'm going to use one eighth inch double sided tape. Hard in my head. Oh my, it's stuck everywhere. So, we're going to place the eighth inch tape just around the very outer edge of this overlay. So I think tomorrow, when I go pick up my groceries, I might stop by Lowe's and buy the stuff to start growing, or to start um, tomatoes from seeds. I don't know if that's, I don't know. I watched a video and now I keep thinking about what, I wanna do that. So I'm going to find the center of this, like that, and I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to mark the center of this really, I'm kind of going to just crease it, we'll see. And I think this is supposed to be two inches down from the top and center. Uh, it's definitely more than two inches. Oh, no, it's not. It's like actually two inches. <laughs> Do you think those of us that sew are better with our inches than fishermen? Which is what my husband is. And I have a little tag that says like nerdy and I figured
figure since I'm going to use this to put a computer in or my laptop um, that nerdy was a good tag for that and this is one of the tags that came out of um, I don't know, but it came out of there. One side says geeky, the other side says nerdy. I'm, I like nerdy better. Sewing blurbs. <laughs> this came out of the sewing blurbs. All right, so I'm just going to tuck that under. And now I'm going to sew this entire thing on using a one inch seam allowance. And I'm going to tie it off in the back so I don't need a back stitch. And I'm just sewing around the outer edge. threads to the back and tie it in a knot. Now that that is sewn on, we want to cut out the, in the part of the lining that is inside of the stitches. So be careful not to cut the overlay. And then cut um, about a quarter inch inside of the stitching. And I also want to be careful not to cut off the end of um, that tag because I don't want it to fray. So wherever you sewed the tag in, if you used one, just don't cut the ends of it off. Which it's actually not showing inside, so I don't have to worry about that. I mean, it's like a quarter, it's whatever. It only sticks under the overlay about a quarter of an inch, so I don't have to worry about cutting it off. Words are hard sometimes. All right, so we have that part. Now we're going to sew the zipper to our pocket. So I need to cut a piece of zipper. And my pocket pieces are a little bit longer. Um, the overlay, I did not cut bigger. 
So you can cut your overlay at the same size. If you were to enlarge your um, overlay, yes, then the gap in between or in the middle would be too wide. Um, and I think it would not hide the stitching that's going to be on your zipper. So I'm going to put my zipper pull on after I sew the zipper tape to the interior zipper pocket panels. Um, and it's a little more difficult to slip it on, but it's definitely easier to sew this way. So I'm just sewing this on using um, a quarter inch seam allowance. And I have the zipper right side up on the right side of the interior zipper pocket panel. Now I want to press the edge of the zipper down on the wrong side. So I'm flipping the um, zipper pocket panel away from the zipper. And now I'm just top stitching the edge of the zipper down onto this pocket panel. And I'm using a 1 8 inch seam allowance for this. And I learned this method from Lauren Mormino. So thank you, Lauren. All right, we'll repeat that with the other panel. So right side up with the zipper, right side up. process to top stitch this down onto yeah whatever the wrong side of the fabric it should be the right side I think nope I think I did this side wrong okay right now the wrong side of the fabric on both sides should be facing up and the right side of the fabric on both sides should be facing down Now I'm going to 
slide my pole on. Potentially. This was way easier. Yeah, never mind. Than my last one, that's all. Okay. So we want our zipper to close toward the right. Or toward the left. So I'm going to now, take my one eighth inch tape and I'm going to put it on the inside around this rectangle opening on the back of the um, zipper overlay. So I need to make sure that this is kind of centered from left to right. And that the zipper is centered from top to bottom as well. And once you're satisfied with your placement, just stick the overlay down. to sew that in place. Also using a 1 8 inch allowance. Our pocket is still like open in the back. I'm kind of going to just start here. And I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches first. I would tie that one off, but I don't want the knot inside of my pocket.
amazing. All right, now you'll fold um, the lining pocket panels right sides together. And I'm just going to clip them together. And then we're going to trim the bottom because we're going to sew these completely closed. Um, normally you would keep a turning hole at the bottom, but we don't need to because we're going to sew this together as a drop-in. going to use whatever between half inch and a quarter inch use whatever size small allowance you want and I'm just going to sew these closed So that lining panel is done. Um, next up is going to be the recessed zipper. Okay, I have the four zipper panels. Um, I'm going to place them all wrong sides up and I'm going to line up the ends. Or I'll mark them individually. I want to mark one inch from the short end on each um, of the zipper panels on both ends. And I'm going to use that one inch line to, when I fold it, um, when I fold the short end toward the back, then it will be folded under by half inch. So. Probably could have tried a little harder to line them up. And I know you can't see my line since I'm using black pen, but I can see it. All right, so then you just want to use um, some double sided tape. I'm using half inch just because that's what I use. Um, this would be fine with quarter inch or you could actually iron it. Um, sometimes if you kind of iron waterproof canvas like this carefully, like the plastic on the back will melt to itself so it would stay creased very nicely. Just don't actually iron the plastic part. That would make a mess. All right, and then we're just folding the short end to the line that we marked so that it's folded under by one half inch.
So when I sew normally, like just sewing, not making a video, I like to listen to music, like super loud music. Um, so that's one of the worst things about filming is like the silence and no music. And then I fill it with me rambling about stuff. Okay. So all of the ends are pressed under by half inch. So I want to make it obviously longer than the zipper panel. Um, so let's see, with this, with the ends folded under, the zipper panel is just under 15 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut this to like, I think I'm gonna cut it to like 20 inches and then I can trim it if I decide that that's too long. I don't like to have like super long tails on my zipper. Um, and I always tuck them inside the finished bag. So. All right, so I heat seal the end of my zipper. And then I'm going to put the zipper pull on. So I'm going to pull the zipper all the way to the other end. When I get close to the other end, I want to separate that and I'm going to fold the zipper tape back at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm just going to use my lighter carefully to melt the edge of the zipper tape and it will melt to each other and stay closed or stay folded. All right, so we have this now. The back has kind of the angle fold, and here it's got a straight fold um, near the, where the zipper curves. So now we are going to place the zipper right side down on the right side of one of the zipper panels. And I place the, where the teeth curve about half inch back from um, the end of the zipper panel. All right, and then I find it easier to sew this on with the zipper unzipped. And I'm just going to clip it together. I'll have to see if I have a um, antique brass zipper end because I don't feel like making one, a zipper tab. Um, a lot of the time I, for my zipper tabs, I just take a piece of vinyl and fold it over the end and then sew it and I can leave that raw edged. Um, I like that better. I guess it's a little bit smaller and just honestly easier than folding a regular zipper tab. So I might do that. I will probably will do that here if I don't have a zipper end. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this on using a quarter inch seam allowance.
towards the end, make sure that you stop and backstitch where the zipper panel ends. Um, otherwise, you'll have stitching that's exposed on your zipper tape. And especially since I'm using gray thread sewing on black, I don't want that. All right, now I'm going to take another zipper panel and place it over top of this one, right sides together. The zipper is sandwiched in between. First, I'm going to match up the two ends. And then clip in between. And then I'm going to sew um, using a 3 8 inch seam allowance to attach the second zipper panel. With my foot, with, the, with this foot on, I can't quite get to 3 8 inch. Um, I'm just under and that, it works out okay. So. If it was for like an apothecary, I would switch my foot out. And now I'm just going to fold the end of this back a little bit further so that it's not longer than the one on top. Now, I'm going to zip my zipper together. I'm going to press the panels away from the zipper. I have a seam roller in here that we'll try for that. And actually somebody, I complained about it being squeaky and somebody mentioned that they put some sewing machine oil on theirs and it's not squeaky anymore. So let's try that out. It's definitely not squeaking, but now it's oily. So let me wipe the oil off. Perfect. All right. So, fold that back. And I'm just going to roll the seams. That worked awesome and it was quiet. All right, and then I'll fold this one back as well. So now the two zipper panels are wrong sides together and folded away from the zipper. And now I'm going to clip these in place. And the seam roller is from um, Hannah Woodworking. Okay, 
So now I'm going to tab stitch all the way around this using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm using a stitch length of 4.5. repeat and attach the other two. Zipper panels to the other side of the zipper. All right, so I'm going to kind of put this in place with the zipper zipped, I think, to make sure that it lines up with the other zipper panel. Good. We're going to unzip that. Did I sew the other one with the zipper on top? I don't think so. I think I did. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Let's go for it with the zipper on top. And now all my clips are upside down and I don't like them that way. zipper panel. Um, does anybody else like dislike recessed zipper panels? I really don't like sewing them. I like having them. I like my bags to have them. I don't enjoy making them. All right. 
Now we're going to sew this on, also using, no, using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Away from the zipper. I also think there are bigger sizes of the seam roller. I don't know. I just found one that I thought was pretty. Um, I think there are different sizes. This seems like a mini one or something. And I think um, quilters use these a lot. Like when you press seam, or when you're, yeah, quilting, if you don't want to stop and uh, iron all the time, that you can use a seam roller. I don't know. Just random rambling while I try to fill up the quiet. This will be the same process, 1 8 inch top stitch all the way around. Thankfully the bag is almost done, so that's good. One stitch too far, or like half a stitch too far, whatever. Okay. All right, I think after this Mr. Hickles, I am definitely moving on to something else. Um, this is my fifth one. I guess I do when there's multiple sizes, but either way, I'm ready for something else. Not sure what yet. All right, so let me figure out what we're gonna do for the zipper um, and 
All right, we're just going to use a piece of vinyl. Um, I cut this one inch by like two inches, I think. And I'm going to trim the sides off. And I have, I think this is seven eighths inch wide double sided tape right here. So I'm just going to stick this on the end. I should have probably marked the center and I didn't. So I'm going to eyeball it. Fold that over. And then I'm just going to trim the ends off um, so it's even with the zipper. that and now I'm just going to top stitch this right along that cut edge cut edge using an eighth inch seam allowance So now let's find the centers on both edges. And I'm just going to put like a super tiny clip right into the center um, because this is only attached with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I don't want to put like a giant cut and then have that be exposed. All right, so I want this side of my interior to be the back. So I'm going to place the zipper, plus this, the zippers will be going the same way when you put it in correctly. Um, let me find the center here, which I did not mark. So same thing, don't make your snip too huge um, because you are only going to have a quarter inch of allowance here. to match up the center and then go out from there. And actually, I would normally base this in place using like an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then come back and sew on the top panel, which is too short. Okay, I think I somehow managed to cut my top panels um, with the regular size pattern and I literally am out of black waterproof canvas. So I have this, um, I think it's a vine, I think she referred to it as a vinyl that I got from Sofal Therapy. Um, and it's very similar to waterproof canvas. Um, it's like a linen kind of, and now I'm sad I didn't use this for the whole lining because it's actually really beautiful. So we're improvising and it's fine. I'm just going to clip this on here. What are the odds that I'm out of black waterproof canvas, that I cut the pieces wrong? Everything was just wrong. I don't know. Is what it is. I'm going to sew this together using a half, no, quarter inch seam allowance. So 
yeah, definitely if you print out in a large pattern, make sure that you mark your pieces um, so that you cut using all the same pieces and not, or I don't know. I don't even know how they would have been on my table at the same time. I have no idea how that happened. Press the seam allowance down toward the bottom lining panel and press the zipper panel up toward the lining top panel. And then we're going to top stitch beneath the zipper panel all the way along the seam using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Thankfully that linen look doesn't look bad against this black. It's a little bit lighter, um, more of a charcoal color, but I think it looks good. All right, so we're going to repeat to attach the zipper panel to the other side. I need to find the center of the lining bottom or lining main. the zipper panel right side up and match the centers. And I'm just going to stick a few clips on here and then I'll place the um, lining top panel over top and then clip the rest of the way. I'm sewing this together also using a quarter inch seam allowance.
do the same thing here and press the zipper panel up. Make sure, oh yeah, they won't, they won't overlap. No worry about that. So we're going to top stitch using an eighth inch seam allowance beneath this seam now. to the moment of truth where we're going to see if this divider pocket is going to work or not. So I need to take my divider pocket. First I'm going to place a um, bottom panel, half of the bottom panel, right sides together um, with each side of this divider pocket. So I'm going to kind of Clip one on and then place the other one on the other side and I can sew them both on um, at the same time. So now I wonder if I should top stitch anything here. I haven't done a ton of uh, divider pockets or divider panels or I did one. I actually only have sewn one and it was in the Lauren bag, no, the Taylor tote from Lauren Moore Me Now. Um, and it had a whole different construction, not like a regular box bottom, it had a gusset. So the whole process for that was different. So I'm just kind of thinking. Okay, so, and I cut this with half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew this together using a one half inch seam allowance. right now is there's this bulk down here and when it's in the bottom of the bag is it going to sit funny so I'm thinking though that I could top stitch it to one side oh I should have not sewn all the way to the bottom because then I could have this seam open and I could top stitch it open I like that idea Okay, I'm going to keep that in mind if I ever actually add a zipper pocket to one of my patterns. Um, what I am going to do right now, though, and I don't know if this is weird, I'm going to top stitch that seam allowance um, from the zipper pocket toward one side of this bottom panel, just so that it's not like sticking straight down, and I don't want to just cut it off and have the little stubby piece in there. So it just messes it up. And side as well. For consistency. And I'm top stitching the seam allowance 
of the bottom panel. see how that sits. I feel like that'll help it sit pretty flat. Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, now let's see. How are we going to, let's mark the center of both sides of the bottom panel. Or the bottom panels, bottom something. The bottoms. Going to. No, I did not mark the center of this bottom panel, but I did mark this or the main panel, but I did mark the center center of the bottom of the other main panel. Okay. So this can go either way since I put. It two zipper pulls on it so I don't have to make sure it's in the right direction with the, my other zippers. Okay, so I'm going to clip this in place. And I think by pressing the zip, the bottom portion open on this, um, that it will help me close up the box corners also. So, all right, I'm going to sew this together using um, a one half inch seam allowance. Stitch that. Is it necessary? I don't really know. If I do, do I top stitch on the bottom panel? I think so. Should I do it? I should do it. I should not. I'm not going to. I don't know. This is all very real time me figuring something. So hopefully I'm not doing it wrong. All right, so we're going to repeat that and attach the bottom panel to the other lining main. It's at the bottom, obviously, because it's the bottom panel. I feel like that would sit in the bag really nice if it was top stitched, but I don't want to like top stitch it the wrong way. Or maybe I'll sew it and then I'll see if let me sew the side. I don't know. I'll just I don't know. I really don't want to seam rip, so I'd rather not top stitch it.
Okay, so we have that part. How do I... Maybe this isn't possible. I should not have sewn all the way to the end of the divider pocket, I think. It's fine. Where is it? And now it's top stitched in. Because I want this to be sewn there, but not like over the bottom panel like that because it gets a little funky. So, it's fine, right? Where's my seam ripper? We're going to, top, or we're going to uh, seam rip some sewing and some top stitching back about half an inch here. So I'm going to fold these bottom panels back so that they're not in the way here. And I've unstitched that about half an inch. And I'm going to line up the end of this divider pocket with the bottom corner of my lining main panels. You know what, I'm going to clip one in place first and then I'll do the other. Fold that bottom panel out of the way. Do the same thing over here. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Hopefully taking that seam out a little bit there was the right thing to do, so. I have to put a little caption on the video during the part where we're sewing that divider pocket, or sewing the divider pocket to the bottom panels to only sew to one half inch from the edge, the end. All right, now I'm going to sew this on using a half inch seam allowance and make sure I'm not sewing through the bottom panels there. should be able to kind of undo that. There's a little bit of, or quite, there's quite a bit of bulk down here now at the bottom corner. So this kind of all is already together in the corner there when we box the bottom. All right, where there's this little seam here at the bottom center, I'm going to clip in that seam up to um, almost where it's sewn so that that part will lay flat and I can top stitch across it or sew across it. So this is like actually very different than a regular box bottom. Or maybe it's not and I'm just over this peg. Okay, you know what? It's not if I do it like this. 
Okay, we're good. I'm going to lay it flat like that. Okay, that's better. And then I can just sew straight across here. And I'm going to use half inch seam allowance. As long as this fits in the final bag frame, then I think you're safe to follow what I did. And if it doesn't, then I just wasted a whole lot of time. Okay, now I think the bottom panel is the right, the bottom panel is right. All right, it turns out like this. Um, honestly, I think I'm going to stitch a couple more times like over that center seam, just because that whole divider panel is in there. And I don't want there to be too much stress on that corner where it falls out or something. Okay, all right, I'm feeling better about this now. So I still have to seam wrap half inch on the end of the other end of the bottom panel. Let's see what that looks like from the inside. Alright, from the inside it actually looks really good. Alright, yes, I am quite pleased with that. We are going to align the center portion only, where the bottom panels are attached to the divider pocket. We're going to seam rip back about half an inch. So now that I have that seam ripped, I'm going to fold the bottom panel back out of the way. just like this, and I'm going to put a clip on here to hold it back out of the way. And then I'm going to line up my lining main with the center divider pocket bottom corner. the lining main to the other side also. Once that's fully clipped in place, I'm going to sew this together, also using a half inch seam allowance. Move that clip out of the way now. And you should be sewing through both lining main panels. All right, we're sewing this together using a half inch seam allowance. And making sure I didn't sew through those bottom panels. I think half of my clips are on the floor now.
fold everything down to box these corners. Second one's a little bit more difficult. To maneuver than the first one. Okay, it's a lot easier to stick your hand inside the bag. Still not 100% sure. I think it's just because it gets a little wadded up here in the center. I do think that that's the right size to cut the bottom panel. It's just a little weird because there's like extra bulk that you wouldn't normally have. I'm going to give this a little inspection from the inside and make sure that nothing looks funky because, like I said, I haven't made box bottom bags with a divider pocket in it yet, so it actually looks good. Um, you can see there how my divider looks. Okay, I'm happy with that. So the next part is going to be attaching the exterior and the lining. So I'm going to do this as a drop-in. Um, so the first thing I want to do, and I'm going to use more of my double tape, or my double-sided tape, because that's what I do. Do I want to use quarter inch or eighth inch or half inch? I'm not sure. Okay. We're finally on like the, well, towards the end. It's been a long haul here. Or it's been a really long haul for me because I started doing this um, two weeks ago. And then I just didn't have time to finish it that weekend. And then last weekend I was just gonna get so much done and I got sick. Um, so I was filming on Saturday and I just, the whole day I just felt so tired. Unexplained, you know what, I wanna, okay, let me realize what I'm doing here real quick. So I want to measure one inch down from the top so that I can fold it under by half inch. Um, and once again, I'm saying what I did before, I really wish I would have measured this when it was flat and made these marks because that would have been so much easier. And I don't know why in my head I was thinking, well, I can't do that because I can't sew it together with the tape and the paper and everything on it. Well, I didn't have to put the tape on it. I only had to measure it. But anyway, so last Saturday as I was filming, I just was so tired all day. I woke up with a headache and I was so tired and I just thought I need to get better sleep or something. I don't know. Well, I woke up on Sunday and I had some kind of a stomach bug, so where I was going to get so much done. Instead, I spent my day Sunday and Monday being sick and getting nothing done. Um, and then kind of the rest of the week, I was recovering from being sick because every time I ate, I felt nauseous again. And 
I'm finally, I think, feeling okay. Although I woke up with a headache again today, so I don't know what that's about. Um, so yeah. Anyway, this bag has been in process now for way too long. And I'm just ready for it to be done. So I'm going to use half inch tape. And I'm just going to place it right along the line I just marked. This might be overkill, I don't know. I do not know what my kid's watching in there, but the TV is noisy. All right, I'm just going to fold this under now, down to that line I marked. And I probably shouldn't have removed all of the paper at once, but whatever. It's fine, right? See, now I kind of want to make another Mr. Heckles out of this, like, I guess it's waterproof linen. I don't know what it's called. I'll have to look. It's like waterproof canvas, but it's not. But I really freaking like how it looks. sure anybody else could do the same bag in like much less time than it's taking me. I feel like I'm just the slowest. And in the process of editing videos, it takes me forever. probably use my little seam roller for this too to just get it nice and oh yeah that works very very well on this so it's just getting it nice and flat and smooth I didn't really put much tape on the ends there so it's 
a little more difficult. Oh my gosh, I love this bag so much. I can't wait to share the finished pictures and do I wait until I get the video out of them? I hate waiting. Oh look, there's like an air bubble trapped in there. It'll come out when I sew. I mean, I'm guessing I'll probably sew through it. Huh, that's funny. Okay, let's do that same thing. Um, all right, so I want the recess zipper pot or interior zipper pocket to be in the back. Which side do I want to be the back? I guess it doesn't matter. Let me get this side. I'm going to kind of match the center of the ends up, which I'm eyeballing it on the exterior pieces. Um, I'm gonna try to top stitch this a little weirdly. I really wish I had a cylinder arm. My friend Brittany has a cylinder arm and is only probably two hours away from me. I should go drive to Brittany's house and use her cylinder arm or have her use it for her for me. Because I would not be happy to mess up my bag right now. So that's one benefit that you have if you sew on a domestic machine is that you have a free arm. Once you upgrade to an industrial and it's a flatbed, um, I usually top stitch my bags inside out, but that's not really an option with the center divider. So you have to do things a little bit differently. Just kind of um, making everything fit here and clip it together. So I always match up like the center of the side panels or the ends or whatever first and then kind of do everything in between. You just kind of have to ease everything together. I don't ruin this right now because I really love it. I'm going to crunch the crap out of my bag so that I can top stitch it from the exterior because I do not want my bobbin thread to be what's on the outside of my bag. I have problems with it every time. All right, I usually turn my bag inside out to top stitch, but I can't because of the center divider pocket thing. So let's give this a try. to just really take my time. 
And as I'm sewing, I need to make sure that the zipper panels are pushed out of the way, that the other side of the bag is not getting pulled under here. Um, kind of a weird way to top stitch, I guess. I wish I had a cylinder arm. We're gonna see how it goes. And hope that I don't mess anything up. So far, so good, I think. I hope, I don't know how much you can see with the whole bag in the way here. Does anybody else top stitch their bags like this instead of inside out? I've always done it inside out since I've been sewing on the middle strip. I'm hopeful. Well, I don't know. I guess my next like big purchase, I would really like a cylinder arm machine, but I don't know that I want to spend that kind of money on a sewing machine right now. So. So the awesome thing about this um, needle positioner, or well, I guess it could, I don't know, it could be awesome. I like it now. I didn't like it at first because I wasn't used to it, I think, um, but my needle always stops in the down position. So that's awesome for when you're adjusting things that you don't accidentally lift up your presser foot and make an adjustment um, when your needle's up and then you shift your bag.
gosh, it looks so good. It actually turned out good. I was worried. I don't know why. Okay. What will I keep in my divider pocket? I don't know. But, so amazing. We've got our little perky panels. Oh. All right, we just need to make handle, handles and this bag is complete. All right, now for my handles, I made these longer, 24 inches, because I'm hoping that it'll be long enough to slide it over my shoulder. Um, I'm going to use some tape directly down the center. I am going to double check my bobbin before I start sewing these. holding the strap the long edges directly to the center line that I marked I'm pressing it down um, I'm going to use webbing on half of this and vinyl on half and I made my straps out of the black vinyl or I think it's called shale clay vinyl <laughs> that's glad I said that all weird And then, oh amazing, I cut webbing. I didn't think I did. All right, I'm just going to use some of the tape. I think I will not film me sewing both handles because there's really no need to see that. So after I cut my webbing, I singed the ends with a lighter so that it doesn't fray. I'm not sure, I'll have to decide if I want to, I, I don't know, use um, strap ends on this. I have like the clamp on kind, but I don't have like the nicer screw on kind and I prefer those. So I probably won't. Um, also with vinyl, since it has like a little bit of thickness to it, if you really wanna make sure that your handles are not wider than the one inch wide webbing. Don't fold the long ends of the vinyl all the way into the center line. Stop um, just a little short of the actual center. All right, and then I'm going to actually sew all the way around these handles. So I'm starting at the short end.
I don't think 24 inches is quite long enough for a shoulder strap. So, whatever. They're longer. I don't think they're going to be long enough. All right, so I punched holes in my straps so that I can install rivets to hold my handles on. And I am not going to make a crossbody strap for this right now. I don't know that I'll use one. Um, I might if these straps aren't long enough to fit over my arm. Then I might make one like just a shorter strap, maybe not a crossbody. Um, okay, so I like to put my rivet, like the front of the rivet, the one with the post, through the front of the strap and then put my cap over the back. And I'll just pop both sides on. I got a pen on my hand. going to use my press to install those rivets. I think I'm, I think I'm making things harder than they need to be today. If you don't have a rivet press, um, I think you could use Chicago screws for this. Um, they're not my favorite necessarily, but they're not bad. Not because there's anything wrong with them, but I feel like rivets, to me, rivets seem more secure. Um, but I think that the Chicago screws that I had previously, they had too long of a post on them, so they kind of weren't right for the application I was using them for. So definitely use Chicago screws if you don't have a rivet press or there are rivet, in rivet installation tools where you use a hammer. Although I don't think that they're as secure. When I had that, when I was using that, um, I did not have great success with my rivets. So we've got both of our straps on, which actually perfectly fits over my shoulder. So all right, I'm happy with this. 24 inches is good for me. I think 26 or 28 maybe would have been better, but this will work. Um, all right, so there you have it. 110%, Mr. Heckles. Um, let's see, actually, if I can back up a little bit with my video. Oh, now you'll see my whole little curtain situation. Don't laugh at it. I had to do something to block the light. Um, all right, so there's 110% Mr. Heckles next to 100% Mr. Heckles. So. It actually got quite a bit taller, more than I thought it would. Huh, it's considerably bigger. Um, and then I'll do a little intro video showing the three sizes. So thanks for watching and enjoy. I can't wait to see what you make.